the first and only time people have walked through the Mersey Tunnel. A doubtful privilege because the tunnel's nearly three miles long, but on this memorable occasion, just before the opening ceremony, everyone jumped at the opportunity. And then, on the 18th of July, 1934, the tunnel through which today more than 10 million vehicles pass every year was declared open by His Majesty King George V, accompanied by Queen Mary. It is a deep pleasure to us to come here today to open for the use of men a thoroughfare so great and strange as this Mersey Tunnel, now made ready by your labor. I am happy to declare the Mersey Tunnel open. May those who use it ever keep grateful thought of the many who struggled for long months against mud and darkness to bring it into being. So at last, one of the greatest triumphs in the history of engineering came into being. The Grand National, which can always be depended on for thrills and drama, provided a particularly sensational finish in 1936, when, as the record books will show, Reynolds Town won for the second year. But great horse as he was, no one can deny that luck was on his side that day as he battled out a close finish with Davy Jones, ridden by the great amateur jockey Lord Mildmay, then the Honourable Tony Mildmay. Thirty-five horses started, and for the most part, the race followed its usual pattern, with the leaders gradually drawing away from the field, with Reynoldstown and Davy Jones prominent among them. jumps from home and the crowd is stunned as Davy Jones runs off the course and Reynolds Town takes the last fence alone. Later it's discovered that Davy Jones' reins have broken. Unchallenged, Reynolds Town goes on to win by 12 lengths from Ego and Bachelor Prince with Davy Jones a stout-hearted non-finisher. Looking back, just as exhilarating were the tremendous strides taken in the 1930s in housing. At this ceremony in 1935, Sir Kingsley Wood, then Minister of Housing, opened a new block of flats, one of many that were going up in the city and setting a lead at that time. It seems difficult to believe that these flats were built more than 20 years ago. And in fact, at the time, they were almost revolutionary in design and structure. But remember, it was not the first time they'd given the lead to others. In 1846, they'd given the world the first medical officer of health. And four years before that, through Kitty Wilkinson, the first public baths and wash houses.
1939. After the years of rehabilitation, it was war again, and Liverpool became the gateway to the Western approaches. And this time, it was a grim struggle for survival, a struggle kept alive by Britain's mastery of the seas, but a mastery that was challenged to its limits by the ruthlessness of the Luftwaffe and the German U-boats. And from a cellar in the shadow of the town hall operated the nerve center of the convoy system, which played its part against tremendous odds with a dogged courage that has always been associated with the merchant marine. these cargo ships were like sitting ducks for fast German raiders and U-boats, but still on they came. No fewer than 1,285 convoys arrived in Liverpool during the war, the largest consisting of well over 60 ships. Yet, despite the day and night bombing of the port by the Luftwaffe, besides the natural technical problems of coping with so many ships, there was no serious delay in docking them. At one time, there were as many as 60 ships outward and inward bound, lying at anchor at the bar. attack beaten off. A rare moment of respite. By the sacrifice of so many of these gallant men under the command of Admiral Sir Max Horton, the Battle of the Atlantic was won. For the first time in a great war, there was no front line, and the battle was waged on our own doorsteps. The Luftwaffe did its worst, with inhuman success. In the May Blitz alone, 3,966 people in the four Merseyside boroughs lost their lives, and 3,812 were seriously injured. 10,000 of their homes were completely destroyed, and 184,000 damaged. A catastrophe from which it would seem almost impossible to recover. <laughs> 